Hi there. Plants are very interesting. And to tell you the truth, everything we see outside the plant is usually affected by something inside the plant. In this picture, the way in which these shoots grow is affected by the environment of the particular plant. This is Z Online School, and in this video, we'll be looking at the auxin theory. We're going to do it in a systematic way, and so by the end of this video, you'll be able to know what plant hormones are, what auxins are, the role of auxins in tropisms, or simply what is termed as the auxin theory. And at the end of this video, we've got some bonus tips, so be sure to stay around till the end to get the maximum value from this video. We are going to start with looking at what a plant hormone is. Auxins are plant hormones, and so to get a better understanding of what auxins are, it's best we look at what a plant hormone is before we look at what auxins are. If we look at the definition of a hormone in the dictionary, we'll have a better picture of what a hormone is. The definition says a hormone is a chemical substance produced in the body or in a plant that encourages growth or influences how the cells and tissue function. Or an artificial substance that has similar effects. Hence, we can summarize that the plant hormone is just a chemical substance or artificial substance that is produced in a plant that encourages growth and development. Examples of plant hormones include the following. Auxins, which we'll be looking at, gibberellins, cytokinins, and abscisic acid. These four are just some examples. There are many hormones found in a plant. However, these four you should know. Now, it's time we looked at what auxins are. Auxins are plant hormones or simply growth substances that are produced at tips of roots and shoots. We've looked at what a plant hormone is. So we can also define auxins as chemical substances produced in plants that encourage growth and development that are produced at the tips of roots and shoots. What I just did there is combine the definition of a plant hormone and this simple definition here. As you can see, the definition now becomes longer. But we don't need to do all that. We just need to understand that auxins are a plant hormone that are produced at tips of roots and shoots. Now, we need to know some characteristics of auxins for us to be able to understand the auxin theory or simply the role of auxins in tropisms. There are basically four characteristics or four things you need to know about auxins. The first is that auxins promote growth of shoots. So any part in the shoot that has got auxins will be known to grow, while those that don't have auxins might grow but at a much slower rate. We should also know that auxins inhibit or simply just stop growth in the roots. Meaning, if a part in the root has got auxins, it won't show a lot of growth, while if a part does not have auxins in the roots, it will show much more growth. The third characteristic is that auxins move towards gravity. So, if a certain plant part, let's say it's a shoot, is put in a certain way that gravity has an effect on the way that auxins are arranged, the auxins will move towards gravity. When we look at the auxin theory, you appreciate this characteristic more. The last one, but not the least, is that auxins will move to a darker side of the shoot, or simply they will move to a darker side when light is coming from one side. With these four characteristics known, now we can look at the role of auxins in tropisms.
we're first going to look at the role of auxins in phototropisms. Now, under phototropisms, you should know that mainly there are two kinds of ways the auxin theory is applied. The first way is just a set of some experiments, three experiments, which prove that truly auxins have got a part to play when it comes to the growth of shoots. Mostly the roots will be under the soil, so when we're talking about phototropisms, only the shoots will be considered. If we have a growing shoot, we're going to have auxins at the tip of this growing shoot. Meaning, if this shoot is exposed to diffuse light, which is just light from all directions, remember we said that if light is coming from one direction, the auxins will move to the part that is darker. Now, to prevent that effect of the auxins being affected by the direction of light, the first experiment uses light from all directions, or simply just placing this growing shoot in an open space where light is not being distracted by objects. Now, when a grain shoot is put in such a place with light from all directions, the auxins will distribute or they will get diffused evenly around that tip. And therefore, what happens is that the auxins will cause growth that is consistent in that shoot. Or simply, that shoot will grow in a uniform way. It won't grow in any bent way. In the second experiment, to prove that auxins are truly the substances that are affecting growth, what happens is that the auxins are blocked to go to the other part of the shoot. And this is done by inserting a piece of mica, which is just a material that is impermeable to chemical substances, specifically the auxins. And thereafter, what happens is that that shoot that is growing won't be seen to grow. Because the auxins have not diffused to the other part of this tip to bring about that uniform growth. Like you saw in the first experiment, we were proving that auxins are important for any shoot to grow. Now, to prove this further, the diffusion of auxins to other parts is blocked. And what is seen in this experiment is that truly that growing shoot or the coleopter won't be seen to grow. In our third experiment, the only change is that a material that is permeable to auxins is used. Such a material is usually an agar block which will be inserted in between the tip of this coleopter and the other part of it. In this experiment, the auxins are able to diffuse through this agar block being that it's permeable to auxins and chemical substances that are essential. After that, a growth is seen and therefore from these three experiments, it's proved that auxins are truly important for growth of a shoot. Under tropisms, one of the most common applications of the auxin theory you find is the role of auxins in phototropism when light is coming from one side. And the word unilateral will be used instead of just saying light from one direction. In such a setup, what happens is a growing shoot or a coleoptile is put inside a certain box or anything that makes light only come from one side. Let's say this was a window and the sun's rays were only coming through one side. It means that this shoot will only receive light coming from the sun on its right part. Therefore, the auxins will move to the darker side, which is the left side. When this happens, it means the left side will grow faster than the right side. And therefore, a bending towards the light source will be seen. That's it for the role of auxins in phototropisms. Now, we're going to look at the role of auxins in geotropism.
we know that geotropism is just the response of a planet part by either moving towards or away from gravity. Now, to show that auxins play an important role in geotropism, what happens is that a growing seed is gotten. Now, when a seed is growing, there are two important parts that are taken into consideration. One is the embryonic shoot and the other is the embryonic root. These two parts are given scientific names. The embryonic shoot, which is just the part which will later be the shoot of a plant, will be called the plumule, while that part which will grow into a root will be referred to as the radical. In this diagram, let's take this projection on our left as our embryonic shoot or simply the plumule, while this one on our right as our radical, which is just the embryonic root. Now, if we have this setup done exactly like this, what happens is that the auxins will move from these tips. Remember we said auxins are produced at the tips of roots and shoots. It means the auxins will move from these tips and then be aligned to the base of the radical and the plumule. This as you can see, it's just one of those characteristics we talked about. The auxins moving towards gravity. Now, we also said that in the shoots, auxins cause a growth. While in the roots, auxins will stop growth. Therefore, what will happen is, for the side we're considering as the embryonic shoot, which is this one here, this part here will grow faster than the one on top and therefore it will bend upwards while this part which we are considering as the embryonic root or the radical will have its lower side not growing fast because the auxins in the roots will stop growth therefore this upper part will grow faster causing this radical to grow downwards. This diagram here shows what happens after the effect of auxins has happened. Now, if you think about it, we said our left part is the shoot, while our right part is the root. You can see that the root is growing downwards, right? And you can see that the shoot is growing upwards. And if you can remember, we said that positive geotropism is shown by the roots, because the roots will grow towards gravity. You have successfully reached the bonus tip section, and in today's video, we have two tips for you. The first is the role of other growth substances that you might have seen in this video. In this table, we've summarized each of them. We've got four given in this table. As you can see, the first column shows us which hormone, and the second one shows you the brief use for that hormone. Here we've got gibberellins. Gibberellins are used to control seed germination, seasonal changes, for example, flowering and fruit formation. What this simply means is that when the hormone gibberellins is being secreted, a plant will likely germinate, it will likely flower, and it will likely form fruits. Now, we go to the second hormone, which is cytokinins. This hormone is also very important in plants. As you can see, it promotes cell division and we are saying that this cell division affects the formation of lateral stems. If you are following, you can agree with me that the auxins will just basically cause a plant to keep going towards light. If the light is coming from one source, the plant will bend towards that light. Now, sometimes plants might not receive enough light at their tips and therefore they will need to develop lateral stems or simply stems in their sides. I'm sure you've seen this with most plants. Sometimes this might not be even caused because the tip is not receiving enough light. Sometimes these hormone cytokinins might be produced if the tip of a plant part is trimmed off. This is why 
it will be seen that when the tips of plants are cut, the plant will usually bring out branches in its side. And that's simply just the hormone cytokinins creating an effect in a plant. The third hormone is abscisic acid. And this hormone creates an inhibition of plant metabolism. Simply what you must understand here is that abscisic acid is like the opposite of the gibberellins hormone. So what the gibberellins hormone brings about is what the abscisic acid really stops. So it stops the seed germination and fruit formation. If such a hormone is produced, it means a plant won't produce fruits. So the gibberellins and the abscisic acid usually can work hand in hand. In the times when a plant does not need to germinate, it will produce abscisic acid. Last but not the least, we've got ethylene. Ethylene is an organic compound that is very essential in plants. And as you can see, it's used mainly for fruits. Ethylene is a hormone produced by fruits. What this hormone does is simply ripen the fruits more. It might be even applied artificially to plants to make them ripe. This hormone is very powerful. This is why you see a whole bunch of bananas getting rotten just because one of the bananas went bad. This is because the ethylene produced by that one banana is affecting all the bananas around it. The second thing you need to know about is apical dominance, something that's very important. Sometimes it might not even be touched, but in this video we decided this is an important fact you need to know. Apical dominance, as you might have read, is just the process whereby the main shoot tip outgrows the other shoots. What this simply means is that the main shoot of a plant will usually outgrow other shoots of that plant. And now the scientific term to refer to that process or that characteristic of a plant is what we are terming as apical dominance. Thanks for watching till the end. Now it's your job again to look around your environment to see if you can see anything we talked about in this video.